This is part three, heat of solution of ammonium nitrate. This should be an endothermic reaction. So in the very end, when you find the change in enthalpy, you better get a positive number. We will see if that happens for us. First, our sample data, again, may or may not match with your data. The mass of the water is 25, degree, uh, 25 grams. The mass of ammonium nitrate is five grams. And the initial temperature of water, remember that's the same as the initial temperature of the calorimeter, that's 20. And T final in our case, we got 8.5. So it did cool down, uh, which is what we expect. The first part of our calculation, we're finding the moles of the ammonium nitrate. We're going to use that because that will help us find the enthalpy, uh, the change in enthalpy later. So that's just simple chem 2A stoichiometry, the mass uh, divided by the molar mass, where the grams are on the bottom. The grams will cancel out and we'll get moles, which will be 0.6246 moles of ammonium nitrate in this case. What do we do with this? Same setup as before, same setup as every single time. The sum of the Q's equals zero. Law of conservation of energy. So Q reaction in this case is uh, has an energy involved, and so this is the first time we see something in here that doesn't have a temperature change. It has an enthalpy change. So what's going to happen is you need to remember that any time there's not only a temperature change but also an enthalpy change, we need a Q. This is our first example of that, and whenever there's a reaction you're going to have a Q of reaction in your setup. So there's Q of reaction plus Q of the water. This is a normal temperature change. In our case, it cooled down from 20 to 8.5. And the calorimeter is the same temperature of the water, so it also cooled down. So how do we set this up? Well, first of all, uh, let's see if we know what everything is. So let's start with the Q water this time. It's going to be the same deal, the MCP delta T. So this is M. CP, uh, CSP, delta T, and the mass is the mass of the water, which we have from before, and you'll be plugged in in just a moment. Uh, we also have CSP. Uh, this is also for the water, so that's going to be a 4.184 joules per gram degree C. And then, let me write out the T final. Uh, T final minus T initial of the water. So T final we already know is 8.5 and T initial uh, was the 20 degrees C. So that's that one. For the calorimeter it'll be pretty similar but a little bit different because remember we don't have the mass we just go CP delta T and the CP is for the calorimeter. Again that's the average from what you found in part one. The delta T is just the same as before, that's T final minus T initial for the water. And you'll see me plug that in in just a moment. And then the Q reaction, that's what we're solving for. Or it's going to lead us to the delta H of reaction. So there's nothing to plug in here, we're actually going to solve. Okay, let's plug all this in. So remember we're solving for a Q reaction. That's minus Q water plus Q cal. So you're just moving those over to the other side. And then here's the two equations we just had written down. MCSP delta T for water and then CP delta T for the calorimeter. We just have to plug in the numbers and we're pretty much there. So here's the mass of water. Here's the CSP of water. It's a constant, same as before. And T final minus T initial. For the calorimeter, remember that's the average uh, CP value from part one. And then 8.5 minus 20 for the delta T. In this case, we got 3468 or 3468 joules. That's a positive number. Positive means it's endothermic, so that's a good thing. That agrees with what we expected for endothermic reaction. We should get a positive number here. There's one more step, actually, to go to delta H of reaction. Q reaction is N moles times delta H of reaction. So if I just do a little cross multiplication where I divide by N, delta H of reaction is Q reaction over N. Q reaction we found up here. And then the moles we found previously in the other part, uh, 0 0.624, uh, 6246 
moles, and if you divide that out, you'll get 55,530 for our sample data, joules per mole.